throughout the centuries, both the Christian church and the Jewish community consider a Jew who becomes a Christian to necessarily be a renunciation of Judaism. So, for example, Reformed Jewish rabbi and, and scholar Carol Shapiro, she says this, To become a Christian is to eradicate Jewishness. Indeed, until the last century, most Christian denominations wouldn't have it any other way. And I want to also highlight a point that David Rudolph makes, and he says this. He says, from the 4th century until the modern period, millions of Jews converted to Christianity and left behind their Jewish identity. Similarly, Orthodox Jewish scholar Michael Vishagrad, he says this, If all Jews in past ages had followed the advice of the church to become Christians, there would be no more Jews in the world today. So, the, the primary evidence we see of this, of just to become a Christian, is to eradicate Jewishness, as Shapiro says, or to become a Christian is to renounce Judaism, is found really in the writings of early Christian literature. So, for example, Ignatius, who's writing in the second century AD, he says this, So lay aside the bad yeast, which has grown old and sour, and turn to the new yeast, which is Jesus Christ. It is outlandish to proclaim Jesus Christ and practice Judaism. So there's this dichotomy. If you want to believe in Jesus, if you want to embrace Christianity, you need to renounce Judaism. You need to stop practicing Judaism. Another example is much later in 787 AD is the Canon 8 of the Second Council of Nicaea. And what this said is this, since certain erring in the superstitions of the Hebrews have thought to mock at Christ our God, who in private and secretly keep the Sabbath and observe other Jewish customs, we decree that such persons be not received to communion, nor to prayers, nor into the church. I was having a conversation with a Messianic rabbi about the podcast that Eric and I are doing here, and I asked him a question of, you know, why, why he doesn't call himself a Christian. And, you know, that's, that's kind of an underlying question that we're, you know, we're addressing right now. And the way he responded, I think, was, was helpful. And that is, he says that words have both denotations and connotations. So think about this. The, the, the word Christian can literally be understood as, as meaning one who follows Christ or one who follows Jesus, the Messiah, Yeshua, that, the, a follower of Yeshua, right? So in that sense, yeah, the, the denotation is that he's a Christian. But words also have connotations. And the connotation is that one has to renounce Judaism. That it's, not, it's no longer Jewish to believe in Jesus. And that's the understanding that both the Jewish community has had for many, many centuries, but also the Christian church, as we've seen in the Second Council of Nicaea and Ignatius and many others that I didn't have time to quote. And even when we're looking from the the transition from the Hebrew Christian Alliance of America to the Messianic Jewish Alliance of America, those Hebrew Christians who wanted to uh, uh, repudiate this idea of Messianic Judaism wanted to repudiate it because it's an embracement of Judaism. It's an embracement of Torah observance to living a Jewish life, Jewish identity. And that's what I'm seeing, that no, I'm not willing to call myself a Christian that's not an accurate description of who I am. So in order to distinguish myself from, say, a Hebrew Christian or a Christian, those followers of Yeshua, yes, but I'm embracing my Jewish identity. I'm, I'm committing myself to Judaism, and I'm identifying with my people Israel. If my faith in Yeshua led me to disregard these things, then I would call myself a Christian, but, but I'm, not, I'm not doing that. I'm a Messianic Jew. That's very well said, Jonathan. Definitions do matter. And again, this isn't just semantics. This isn't just overthinking. This is a matter of clear communication of who you are, what you believe, and how you live your life. 